Okay, so once again, good afternoon. So this time we're going to discuss about the global e-business and collaboration. So the following question can be answered after reading this chapter or after the discussion of this chapter. So number one, how do business process work? What connection do they have to information system? And how do system benefit the various management teams within a company? How do enterprise-wide linking system enhance organizational performance? <clears throat> And what technologies are used by using or by system for collaboration and social business? And what are they so crucial? And the last is what function in a firm handles information system. In information system and business processes, no? uh, businesses must deal with a wide variety of information in order to functions including data about their products and services, customers, workers, invoices, and payments. So in order to operate effectively and improve the overall performance of the company, they must plan work activities that make use of this information because business can manage all of their information, make better decisions and improve the execution of their business operations. And of course, we need to thank for the information system. And to give us more details about the topic, let us all welcome our next presenter. Go ahead, ma'am. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. So I'll be presenting Chapter 2, Global E-Business and Collaboration. So uh, here is our learning objectives. So after reading this chapter, you will be able to answer the following questions. Number one, what are business processes and how are they related to information systems? Number two, how do systems serve the different management groups in a business? Number three, how do systems that link the enterprise improve organizational performance? Number four, why are systems for collaboration and social business so important and what technologies do they use? And lastly, what is the role of the information system function in a business? So in order to operate, Businesses must deal with many different pieces of information about suppliers, customers, employees, invoices and payments, and of course, their products and services. So they must organize work activities that use this information to operate efficiently and enhance the overall performance of the firm. So information systems make it possible for firms to manage all their information, make better decisions, and improve the execution of their business processes. So business processes are the collection of activities required to produce a product or service. So these activities are supported by flows of material, information, and knowledge among the participants in business processes. So business processes also refer to the unique ways in which organizations coordinate work information and knowledge, and the ways in which management chooses to coordinate work. So to a large extent, the performance of a business firm depends on how well its business processes are designed and coordinated. So a company's business processes can be a source of competitive strength if they enable the company to innovate or to, to execute better than its rivals. So business processes can also be liabilities if they are based on outdated ways of working that impede organizational responsiveness and efficiency. So every business can be seen as a collection of business processes, and some of which are part of larger encompassing processes. So for instance, the uh, uses of mentoring, wikis, blogs, and videos are all part of the overall knowledge management processes. So many business processes are tied to a specific functional area. So for example, the sales and marketing function is responsible for identifying the customers and the human resources function is responsible for hiring employees. So table 2.1 describes some typical business processes for each of the functional areas of the business. 
So our other business processes cross many different functional areas and require coordination across departments. So for instance, Consider the seemingly simple business process of fulfilling a customer order. So uh, see figure 2.1. So initially, the sales department receives a sales order. The order passes first to accounting to ensure the customer can pay for the order either by a credit verification or request for immediate payment prior to shipping. So once the customer credit is established, the production department pulls the product from inventory or produces the product. And then the product is shipped and this may require working with a logistic firm such as FedEx. So a bill or invoice is generated by the accounting department and a notice is sent to the customer indicating that the product has shipped. The sales department is notified of the shipment and prepares to support the customer by answering calls or fulfilling warranty claims. So now that you understand business processes, it is time to look more closely at how information systems support the business processes of a firm. Because there are different interests, specialties, and levels in an organization, there are different kinds of systems and no, no single system can provide all the information an organization needs. So systems for different management groups. A business firm has systems to support different groups or level of management. And these systems include transaction processing system and systems for business intelligence. So operational manager needs systems that keep track of the elementary activities and transaction of the organizations, such as sales, receipts, cash deposits, payroll, credit decision, and the flow of materials in a factory. So the transaction processing system provides this kind of information. A transaction processing system is a computerized system that performs and records the daily routine transactions necessary to conduct business such as sales order entry, hotel reservations, payroll, employee record keeping, and shipping. So the principal purpose of systems at this level is to ensure, uh, to answer rather the routine questions and to track the flow of transaction through the organization. So how many parts are in inventory? What happened to Mr. Smith's payment? So to answer this kind of questions easily. So. To answer this kind of questions, in, information generally must be easily available, current, and accurate. So at the operational level, the tasks, resources, and goals are predefined and highly structured. So the decision to grant credit to a customer, for instance, is made by a lower level supervisor according to predefined criteria. So all that must be determined is whether the customer meets the criteria. So here, as you can see in our uh, presentation, figure 2.2, it illustrates a TPS for payroll processing, payroll processing. So a payroll system that keeps tracks of money paid to employees. An employee timesheet with the employee's name, social security number, and number of hours work per week represent a single transaction for this system. So once this transaction is input into the system, it updates the system's master file that permanently maintains employee information for the organization. The data in the system are combined in different ways to create, to create reports of interest to management and government agencies and to send paychecks to employees. So managers need TPS to monitor the status of internal operations and the firm's relations with the external environment. So TPS are also major producers of information for the other systems and business functions. So for example, the payroll system illustrated in the figure 2.2, along with other accounting TPS, supplies data to the company's general, general ledger system, which is responsible for maintaining records of the firm's income and expenses and for producing reports such as income statements and balance sheet. It also supplies employee payment history data for insurance, pension, and other benefits calculation to the firm's human resource function 
employee payment data to government agencies such as the Bureau of Internal Revenue Service and Social Security Administration. So the transaction processing system are often so central to a business that TPS failure for a few hours can lead a firm's demise and perhaps that of other firms linked to it. So imagine what would happen to UPS if its package tracking system were not working. What would the airlines do without their computerized reservation systems? So the interactive session on technology describes the impact on airline travel when automated baggage handling system are not working properly. So as you read this case, so try to identify the transaction being processed and how the data generated from this system impact business performance. So firms also have business intelligence system that focus on delivering information to support management decision-making. So business intelligence is a contemporary term for data and software tools for organizing, analyzing, and providing access to data to help managers and other enterprise users make more informed decision. So business intelligence addresses the decision-making decision -making needs of all levels of management. So this section provides a brief introduction to business intelligence. So business intelligence system for middle management help with monitoring, controlling, decision-making, and administrative activities. So in chapter one, we define management information system as the study of information system in business and management. So the term management information system or MIS also designates a specific specific category of information systems serving middle management. So MIS provide middle managers with reports on the organization's current performance. And this information is used to monitor and control the business and predict future performance. So the MIS summarize and report on the company's basic operations using data supplied by transaction processing system. So the basic transaction data from TPS are compressed and usually presented in reports that are produced on a regular schedule. So today, many of these reports are delivered online. So uh, here in figure 2.3, it shows how a typical MIS transforms transaction level data from inventory, production, and accounting into MIS files that are used to provide managers with reports. So figure 2.4 shows a sample report from this system. So MIS typically provide answers to written questions that have been specified in advance and have a predefined procedure for answering them. So for instance, MIS reports might list the total pounds of lettuce used this quarter by a fast food chain, or as illustrated in 2.4, compare total annual sales figure for specific products to plan targets. And this system generally are not flexible and have little analytical capability. So most MIS, MIS use simple routines such as summaries and comparison as opposed to sophisticated mathematical models or statistical techniques. So other types of business intelligence systems support, support more non-routine decision making. So decision support system or DSS focus on problems that are unique and rapidly changing for which the procedure for arriving at a solution may not be fully predefined in advance. So they try to answer questions such as this. So what would be the impact on production schedules if we were, if we were to double sales in the month of December? What would happen to our return on investment if a factory schedule were delayed for six months Although DSS use inter internal information system from T TPS and MIS, they often bring in information from external sources such as the current stock prices or product prices of competitors. And these systems are employed by super user managers and business analysts who want to use sophisticated anal analytics and models to analyze data. So an interesting small but powerful DSS is the voyage estimating system 
of a large global shipping company that trans transports bulk purgus cargoes of foil, oil, ores, and finished products. The firm owns some vessels, charters others, and bids for shipping contracts in the open market to carry the general cargo. So a voyage estimating system calculates financial and technical voyage details. Financial calculations include the ship, ship time or cost, freight rates for various types of cargo, and port expenses. So technical details include a myriad of factors such as the ship, cargo capacity, the speed, port distances, fuel and water consumption, and loading patterns. So the system can answer questions such as the following. Given a customer delivery schedule and an offered freight rate, which vessel should be assigned and at what rate to maximize profits? So what is the optimal speed at which a particular vessel can optimize its profit and still meet its delivery schedule? So what is the optimal loading pattern for a ship bound for the U.S.? So the figure 2.5 illustrates the DSS build for this company. The system operates on a powerful desktop personal computer, providing a system of menus that make it easy for users to enter data or obtain information. So the voyage estimating DSS we have just described draws heavily on models. So we have four major enterprise applications. So number one is the enterprise resource planning system. So enterprise system firms use enterprise system, also known as the ERP systems, to integrate business processes in manufacturing and production, finance and accounting, sales and marketing, and human resources into a single software system. So information that was previously fragmented in many different systems is stored in a single comprehensive data repository where it can be used by many different parts of the business. Next, we have the supply chain management systems. So the supply chain management system firms use supply chain management system to help manage the relationship with their suppliers. So these systems help suppliers purchasing firms, distributors, and logistic companies share information about the orders, production, inventory levels, and delivery of products and services so they can source, produce, and deliver goods and services efficiently. So the ultimate objective is to get the right amount of their products from their source to their point of consumption in the least amount of time and at the lowest cost. So this system increased firm profitability by lowering the cost of moving and making products and by enabling managers to make better decisions about how to organize and schedule sourcing, production, and distribution. Next, we have the customer relationship management system. So customer relationship management system firms use CRM system to help manage the relationship with their customers. So CRM systems provide information to coordinate all of the business processes that deal with the customers in sales, marketing, and service to optimize revenue, customer satisfaction, and customer retention. So this information helps firm identify, attract, and retain the most profitable customers provide better service to existing customers, and increase sales. And lastly, we have the knowledge management system. So knowledge management system, uh, some firms perform better than others because they have better knowledge about how to create, produce, and deliver products and services. And this firm knowledge is unique, difficult to imitate, and can be leveraged into long-term strategic benefits. So the KMS enable organization to better manage processes for capturing and applying knowledge and expertise. And this system collect all relevant knowledge and experience in the firm and make it available wherever and whenever it is needed to improve business processes and management decision. 
So they also link the firm to external sources of knowledge. So with all these systems and information, you might wonder how is it possible to make sense of them? So how do people working in firms pull it all together, work toward common goals, and coordinate plans and actions? So information system can't make decision, hire or fire people, sign contracts, agree on deals, or adjust the price of goods to the marketplace. So in, in addition to the types of systems we have just described, so businesses need special system to support collaboration and teamwork. So now what is collaboration? So collaboration is working with others to achieve shared and explicit goals. Collaboration focuses on tasks or mission accomplishment and usually takes place in a business or other organization and between businesses. So teams have a specific mission that someone in the business assigned to them. So team members need collaborate on the accomplishment of specific tasks and collectively achieve the team mission. The, the team mission might be to win the game or increase, increase online sales by 10%. So teams are often short-lived depending on the problems they tackle and the length of time needed to find a solution and accomplish the mission. So many firms today enhance collaboration by embracing social business. So this, this, the use of social networking platforms, including Facebook, Twitter, and internal corporate social tools to engage their employees, customers, and suppliers. So these tools enable workers to set up profiles, form groups, and follow each other's status updates. The goal of social business is to deepen interaction with groups in, inside and outside the firm to expedite and enhance information sharing, innovation, and decision making. So a key word in social business is conversation. So customers, suppliers, employees, managers, and even oversight agencies continually have conversation about the firms often without the knowledge of the firm or, or its key actors, the employees and managers. So supporters of social business argue that if firms could tune in into these conversations, they would strengthen their bonds with consumers, suppliers, and employees, increasing their emotional involvement in the firm. So all of this requires a great deal of information transparency. People need to share opinions and facts with others quite directly without inter intervention from executive or others. So employees get to know directly what customers and other employees think. Suppliers will learn very directly the op opinions of supply chain partners and even managers presumably will learn more directly from their employees how well they are doing. So nearly everyone involved in the creation of value will, will know much more about everyone else. If such an environment could be created, it is likely, likely to drive, drive operational efficiencies, spur an innovation, and accelerate decision making. If product designers can learn directly about how their products are doing in the market in real time, based on the consumer feedback, they can speed up the redesign process. If employees can use the social connections inside and outside the company to capture new knowledge and insights, they will be able to work more efficiently and solve more business problems. So here, the table 2.2 describes important applications of social business inside and outside the firm. So uh, this chapter focuses on enterprise, social business, its internal corporate uses. So here are the examples of social business application. We have the social networks, crowdsourcing, shared workspaces, blogs and wikis, so social commerce, file sharing, social marketing, and communities. So here, the table 2.3 summarizes some of the benefits of collaboration and social business 
that have been identified. So uh, I'll just uh, explain uh, two benefits and their rationale. So it, number one example is the productivity. So people interacting and working together can capture expert knowledge and solve problems more rapidly than the same number of people working in isolation from one another. And there will be fewer errors. So another example, the customer service. So people working together using collaboration and social tools can solve customer complaint, complaints and issues faster and more effectively than if they were working in isolation from one another. So figure 2.7 graphically illustrates how collaboration is believed to impact business performance. So the successful collaboration requires an appropriate organizational structure and culture along with appropriate collaboration technology. Tools and technologies for collaboration and social business. So a collaborative team-oriented culture won't produce benefits without information system in place to enable collaboration and social business. So hundreds of tools are designed to deal with the fact that in order to succeed in our jobs, we must depend on one another, our fellow employees, customers, suppliers, and managers. Some high-end tools like IBM Lotus Notes are expensive, but powerful enough for global firms. Others are available online for free and are suitable for small businesses. So let's look more closely at some of these tools. So number one is the email and instant messaging. So email and instant messaging, including the text messaging, have been major communication and collaboration tools for interaction jobs. Their software operates on computers, cell phones, and other wireless handheld devices, and include features for sharing files as well as transmitting messages. So many instant messaging systems allow users to engage in real-time conversations with multiple participants simultaneously. So in recent years, email use has declined with messaging and social media becoming preferred channels of communication. So next is the wikis. Wikis are a type of website that makes it easy for users to contribute and edit text content and graphics without any knowledge of web page development or pro programming techniques. So the most well-known wiki is the Wikipedia, the largest collaboratively edited reference project in the world. It relies on volunteers, makes no money, and accepts no advertising. So wikis are very useful tools for storing and sharing corporate knowledge and insights. So enterprise software vendor SAP AG has a wiki that acts as a base of information for people outside the company, such as customers and software developers who build programs that interact with SAP software. So in the past, those people asked and sometimes answered questions in an inform informal way on SAP online forums, but that was an efficient system with people asking and answering the same question over and over. Lastly, we have the virtual worlds. Virtual worlds such as Second Life are online 3D environments populated by residents who have built graphical representation of themselves known as avatars. So organizations such as IBM and INSET an international business school with campuses in France and Singapore are using this virtual world to house online meetings, training sessions, and lounges. So real world people represented by avatars meet, interact, and exchange ideas at this virtual location using gestures, chat box, conversation, and voice communication. Collaboration and social business platforms. So in an effort to reduce travel expenses, many companies, both large and small, are adopting video conferencing and web conferencing technologies. So uh, companies 
are using virtual meeting system for product briefings, training courses, strategy session, and even inspirational chats. So a video conference allows individuals at two or more locations to communicate simultaneously through two-way video and audio transmission. So high-end video conferencing system feature telepresence technology, an integrated audio and visual environment that allows a person to give the appearance of being present at a location other than his or her true physical location. Free or low-cost internet-based systems such as Skype, Skype group, video conferencing, Zoom, and OVO are of lower quality but still use, useful for smaller companies. Apple's FaceTime and Google video chat tools are useful tools for one-to-one -to -one video conferencing. So Google Apps or Google Sites and Cloud Collaboration Services. So one of the most widely used Free online services for collaboration is the Google Apps or Google Sites. Google Sites allow users to quickly create online group editable websites. Uh, Google Sites is one part of the larger, larger Google App suite of tools. So Google Sites users can design and populate, populate websites in minutes and can without any advanced technical skills, post a variety of files including the calendars, text, spreadsheets, and videos for private group or public viewing and, ed and editing. So Google Drive is an example of a cloud-based cyber lockers. Cyber, cyber lockers are online file sharing services that allow users to upload files to secure online storage sites from which the files can be shared with others. So Google Drives offer five free gigabytes of online storage with additional monthly charges for more storage up to 16 terabytes. And this service works on multi multiple operating systems, browsers, and mobile devices. Users can create and edit some types of documents online, synchronize these files with all of their devices, and share them with other people. So Google Docs is built, in, built into Google Drive, enabling users to work into real time on documents spreadsheets and presentations and receive notifications when there are comments. Next is the Microsoft SharePoint. Microsoft SharePoint is a browser-based collaboration and document management platform combined with a powerful search engine that is installed on corporate servers. So SharePoint has a web-based interface and close integration with everyday tools such as the Microsoft Office desktop software products. So SharePoint software make it possible for employees to share their document, documents and collaborate on projects using Office documents as the foundation. SharePoint can be used to host internal websites that organize and store, store information in one central workspace to enable teams to coordinate work activities, collaborate on and publish document, maintain maintain task lists, implement workflows, and share information via wikis and blogs. So users are able to control version of documents and document security. Because SharePoint stores and organizes information in one place, users can find relevant information quickly and efficiently while working together closely on, on tasks, projects, and documents. So enterprise search tools help locate people, expertise, and content. So as noted in the chap chapter opening case, the SharePoint has recently added social tools. And lastly, we have the Lotus Notes. Lotus Notes was an early example of Groupware, a collaborative software system with capabilities for sharing calendars, collective writing and editing, shared database, database access, and electronic meetings with each participant able to see and display information from others and other activities. So note software installed on desktop or laptop computers obtains applications stored on an IBM Lotus Domino server. Lotus Notes is now web enabled with its scripting and application development environment so that users can build custom application to suit their unique needs. 
So node software installed on the user's client computer allows the machine to be used as a platform for email, instant messaging, web browsing, calendar or resource reservation work, as well as for interacting with collaborative applications. So today, Notes also has capabilities for blogs, microblogs, wikis, RSS aggregators, help desk systems, voice and video conferencing, and online meetings. Enterprise social networking tools create business value by connecting the members of an organization through profiles, updates, and notifications similar to Facebook features, but tailored to internal corporate uses. So IBM recently introduced a set of social business tools running on a cloud platform called the Smart Cloud for a social business featuring users' profiles, communities, email, instant messaging, web meetings, calendars, personal dashboards, and file sharing. So table 2.5 uh, provides more detail about these internal social capabilities. So we've seen that businesses need information system to operate today and that they use many different kinds of systems. But who is responsible for running these systems? Who is responsible for making sure the hardware, software, and other technologies used by these systems are running properly and are up to date? So end users manage their systems from a business standpoint, but managing the, the technology requires a special information system function. So in all but the smallest of firms, the information system department is the formal organizational unit responsible for information technology services. And the information system department is responsible for maintaining the hardware, software, data storage, and net networks that comprise the firm's IT infrastructure. So the information systems department consists of specialists such as the programmers, system analysts, project leaders, and information system managers. So programmers are highly trained technical specialists who write the software instruction for computers. Next, we have the system analysts. So system analysts constitute the principal liaison between the information system groups and the rest of the organization. It is the systems analyst's job to translate business problems and requirements into information requirements and system. Next is the information system managers. So they are leaders of team of programmers and analysts, project managers, physical facility managers, telecommunication managers, or database specialists. And they are also managers of computer operation and data entry staff. So also external specialists such as hardware vendors and manufacturers, software firms, and consultants frequently participate in the day-to-day -day operation and long-term planning of information systems. In many companies, the information system department is headed by a chief information officer or the CIO. The CIO is a senior manager who oversees the use of information technology in the firm. So today's CIOs are expected to have a strong business background as well as information system expertise and to play a leadership role in integrating technology into the firm's business strategy. Next, we have the Chief Security Officer or the CSO. The CSO is in charge of information system security for the firm and is responsible for enforcing the firm's information security policy. The CEO CSO is responsible for educating and training users and information systems specialists about the security, keeping management aware of security threats and breakdowns, and maintaining the tools and policies chosen to implement securities. So information system security and the need to safeguard personal data had become so important that corporation collecting vast quantities 
quantities of personal data have established position for a chief privacy officer or the CPO. The CPO is responsible for ensuring that the company complies with existing data privacy laws. Next is the chief knowledge officer or the CKO. The CKO is responsible for the firm's knowledge management program. The CKO helps design programs and systems to find new sources of knowledge or to make better use of existing knowledge in organizational and management processes. And lastly, we have the end users. The end users are representatives of department outside of the information system group for whom applications are developed. And these users are playing an increasingly large role in the design and development of information system. So there are many types of business firms and there are many ways in which the IT function is organized within the firm. So a very small company will not have a formal information systems group. It might have one employee who is responsible for keeping its networks and application running, or it might use consultants for these services. Larger companies will have a separate information systems department, which may be organized along several different lines, depending on the nature and interest of the firm. So our learning track describes alternative ways of organizing the information system function within the business. So the question of how the information system department should be organized is part of the larger issue of IT governance. So IT governance include the strategy and policies for using information technology within an organization. So it specifies the, the decision, decision rights and framework for accountability to ensure that the use of information technology supports the organization's strategies and objectives. So how much should the information system function be centralized? What decision must be made to ensure effective management and use of information technology, including the return on IT investments? Who should make this decision? How will this decision be made and monitored? So firms with superior IT governance will have clearly thought out the answers. So that would be all. I hope you learned a lot from our discussion. So thank you everyone for listening. Gising pa ba kayo, classmate? <laughs> Ang haba ng topic ko. <laughs> Wala kasi kami kahati. <laughs> okay, actually, due to, ano, no? Because it's just only uh, one presenter in one chapter. So, medyo, uh, okay. Okay, so to answer the question, so medyo gising pa po, sabi niya. Okay, so to answer a questions earlier, no, uh, before we, uh, actually, before we start, no, uh, our presenter actually uh, give us five questions, no, to answers, no, and actually, Anis is speaking, no, she will be able to answer all those questions, but I just want to add addition, uh, uh, an inputs, no, so the first question actually goes like this. So how do business processes work? And what connection do they have to information system? Again, uh, a business process a logically related sequence of actions that specify how particular business tasks are carried out. So it is a distinctive method of coordinating work information and knowledge inside an organization. Again, business processes are important for managers to be aware of since they affect how well a firm can conduct its operations and could provide a competitive edge. Each of the main business functions has its own unique business processes, uh, but many of them are cross-functional. Information system 
no? Uh, assist firms restructure and streamline business operations by automating certain of these procedures. Another question is, how do system benefit the various management teams inside the company? <clears throat> As our presenter mentioned, no, the transaction processing systems or the TPS, which keep track of the flow of the everyday regular transactions required to run a firm include systems that serve operational management. So by considering data from transactional processing system, management information system generate reports for middle management. And these are not particularly analytical because using cutting edge analytical mods, models, decision support system or DSS assist management judgment that are distinct and rapidly changing. And these many technologies, all of all over business intelligence, no, as BI, that aids in the decision making of managers and enterprise staff. <clears throat> and this business intelligence system give data in the form of graphs, charts, and dashboard presented via portals to various levels of management, including executive support system for senior management. And this system draw their data from both internal and <clears throat> external sources. <clears throat> Another question is how do enterprise-wide linking system enhance organizational performance? <clears throat> so multiple function in business processes can be coordinated by enterprise apps. <clears throat> uh, enterprise system enhance coordination and decision-making by integrating the main internal business operations of a company into a single software system. <clears throat> System for supply chain management assists the company in managing its interactions no, with suppliers to streamline the organization's procurement, production, and delivery of goods and services. I think all of us are aware with CRM or the Customer Relations Management System. No? It organizes the company's customer-related business operation. Utilizing knowledge management <coughs> systems, no? business may maximize the production exchange and dissemination of knowledge. Private corporate networks called intranets and extranet, which are based on internet technology. <clears throat> Bring together data from various systems. Private corporate intranets are made accessible to outsiders in part through extranet. So what technology technologies are used by systems for collaboration <clears throat> and social business and why are they so crucial? <clears throat> We need to appreciate the collaboration because, again, collaboration is the process of working together to achieve specific stated aims. So in order to engage staff, clients, and suppliers, social businesses use both internal and external social networking platforms. And this can improve teamwork. So <clears throat> globalization, the centralization of decision making and the rise of employment where contract is the key value adding activity have all contributed to the importance of collaborations and social businesses in company. <clears throat> Again, collaboration in social business improve creativity, output, quality, and client relations. Email and instant messaging like ng wikis, no? virtual meeting platforms, katulad ng Zoom na ginagamit natin ngayon, virtual world, cyber lockers, collaboration platforms like Google Sites, Google Apps, Microsoft SharePoint, <coughs> and Lotus Notes, and business social networking tools like Chatter, Yammer, Jive, and IBM Connections are some example of tools for collaborations and <coughs> social business. And the last one is what functions in a firm handles information system. <clears throat> um, the official organizational division in charge of information technology services is the information system department. No? Maybe in your agency or in your company, tinatawag nyo siya na MIS department, IT department, ITSD department, or simply MIS department or IT department. <clears throat> it is in charge of maintaining the network data storage, no? let's say either uh, using server or they have also cloud cloud computing no? <clears throat> to, serve, uh, to, to store data. No? Of course, it's just not only that, but we need to consider the hardware and the software that makes up the company's <clears throat> IT infrastructure. So the, the, this department is open-led by the CIO 
and is made up of professionals, including programmers, system analysts, project managers, and information system managers. But in some other agency, you know, they were called their uh, boss as MISN, IT head. No, it depends upon to their uh, company's uh, structure. Okay, so I think that's it for chapter two discussion.